I'm Chirag Soni. I'm the director of SGL, uh, co-founder and director. Uh, SGL has 17 labs across the world, including New York, London, Dubai, Riyadh, Jeddah in Saudi Arabia, and 11 laboratories in India. It's a pleasure to have you all here. Thank you so much for being there. And thank you to Jewelry Outlook for organizing this webinar. Uh, interesting times to, to learn something new, to explore something new. I must uh, tell you that adaptability is the key to, to success. And uh, in today's world, we all must learn, we all must adapt, we all must be agile to, to work towards a greater future. There's a very interesting quote that I would like to share before we start this session, uh, which is from Mr. Schwab from the World Economic Forum. And he says, in today's world, it's not just the big fish eating the small fish. It is the fast fish eating the slow fish. And that's so true looking at today's time and environment and how things are going to shape up, you know, the world coming, going forward. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about uh, lab grown diamond detection, uh, the future that it holds uh, in, in the industry that we are all in. We're going to talk about lab grown diamonds as well. And I'm going to also give you a presentation uh, that me and my team have prepared for for lab drones and the future. We're going to see a couple of videos as well. And very, very important. Uh, there will be two question and answer sessions uh, during this session. One is going to be uh, towards the middle of my presentation and the other is going to be towards the end. So feel free to ask questions because that's what we are here for. Uh, I would try and answer as many questions I can uh, the most relevant ones will, of course, get priority in this. So uh, let's talk about uh, diamond detection. As you all know, diamond detection is, is the term that we all use to screening natural diamonds versus lab grown diamonds. And this particular activity, this particular process has taken a lot of importance in the past few years. Uh, purely because of the introduction of laboratory grown diamonds entering the industry. A lot of people have uh, been upfront and have disclosed if they have to use lab grooms, but there are a lot of others who haven't been doing that. And that's where the need for laboratory grown uh, diamond detection instruments have come up and, and surfaced very much in the industry in the past few years. Whilst there are a lot of instruments that are available in the market today, uh, there are few which are really, really good, uh, which will help you screen uh, diamonds in loose conditions and even jewelry at times. Uh, interestingly, you know, during this lockdown, a lot of people have connected with me and asked me uh, what will be the future of the industry and uh, what will be the future going forward in terms of the consumer psyche and the consumer buying patterns and the consumer mentality. Now, uh, as much as I would like to talk on that subject, I would like to avoid that because uh, I really don't want to talk about any negative, you know, things, how the world is going to come crashing down or something like that. We are here to talk about how to see this as an opportunity. We have to talk about learn from uh, a situation like this and evolve. We are here to say how we all are going to shape our future and, and uh, understand that nothing is constant. If we are in a lockdown, it's not going to be forever. This is going to go away as well at some point and we'll get, get started with our daily routine and our work. And that is where we probably will look back to this time and said, what did we do during this lockdown? So guys, uh, be, be positive, uh, work towards what we want to all achieve after the lockdown. Uh, look for opportunities that can really help you and your organization, your team members, your colleagues, uh, learn something new out of this and use that for the future. 
uh, again, whilst we are on a lockdown, there are so many opportunities that already exist and so many opportunities that companies have got. Take an example of uh, Zoom, uh, the, the, the application that we're all using right now. The Zoom stock price has shot up uh, and almost doubled in the last six months. Now, what is the learning from this is not just the stock price. The learning is that a lot of us have started using uh, Zoom and other applications that will help us be in a seminar, a webinar, a joint meeting like this. And probably we'll continue using this technology in the future as well and ensure that you have better productivity in our work environment. So going back to uh, diamond detection, uh, as I mentioned that uh, there are a lot of good instruments that are available in the market today. Uh, why diamond detection is not going to be drastically impacted due to coronavirus uh, situation lockdown is that diamond detection is a, is a protocol. It's a discipline. It's uh, the need of the hour before today and tomorrow. And as more and more people have started trading in uh, lab grown diamonds, uh, as I mentioned, there are players who are ethical, who are transparent, and there are players who are not so transparent, not so ethical. And to ensure that there is complete transparency in what you are dealing with and what you supply to your customers. A lot of people have started using these instruments within their premises uh, by having one of the other scientific instruments. Uh, a lot of people send goods to the laboratories, including our labs in New York, London, Dubai, Mumbai have seen a lot of surge in the screening service. Uh, I, I can probably tell you it is almost double in the last two years that we've been screening more and more diamonds that come into our lab. And just as a screening service, not just for certification in uh, set jewelry or loose diamonds. This clearly shows that people want to ensure that they are buying the right stuff and they're selling the right stuff to their customers, which is very, very, very crucial in today's time. This is how you will be able to guarantee your customer. This is how you're able to build that trust uh, within your fraternity and, and promise that everything that you are selling or buying is being filtered at, at, at the level where you are dealing with. So yes, going forward, I really don't see a, a major drop uh, when it comes to diamond detection services. Uh, if you have any question that I said, feel free to ask uh, any, anything that is relevant, I'll surely pick it up and I would love to uh, answer those questions. Now, uh, let me share a small presentation with you, which talks about lab grown diamonds, uh, which we all uh, uh, know of, uh, mostly probably uh, all know of, and uh, a lot of information is being populated today on lab grown diamonds uh, across the world, with the US being one of the major markets for lab grown, where almost 28% of the retailers have already started selling lab growns uh, in their stores, which is, which is a big number. And US being one of the largest markets any which ways in the world, this uh, makes a whole lot of difference. It, it is a, a category which is being embraced by the millennials. Uh, it is a category that is uh, being uh, you know, marketed, perceived, sold as a sustainable product category. And up to a certain extent it is, uh, I wouldn't get into the claims of how, how eco-friendly it is versus natural diamonds. We're not here to do that. We're here to say, what is the future for lab grown diamonds that we see it is. And uh, let, me, let me start the presentation here so that we can uh, start throwing more light on the matter.
All right, guys. So there you are. Uh, the future of lab grown diamonds. Let's uh, see what stats we have to, to introduce you to this world of lab grown diamonds. And let us go through the brief outline. What are we going to talk about here? We're going to talk about uh, it being a key luxury segment demand driver. Uh, how natural diamond rough production uh, stands in terms of these stats, the constrained supply of natural diamonds. Uh, this is a very, very important point. Uh, we're gonna talk a little more about this as well. And this will probably throw more light on the matter on how natural diamond being a commodity that is derived from the nature is going to deplete at some point and uh, that is where it creates an equal opportunity for laboratory grown diamonds we're going to talk about some myths and facts about lab grown diamonds uh, the classification of lab grown diamonds that is hphd and cbd we're going to talk about the marketing messages that are uh, are being being used around lab grown diamonds and of course the price drivers and the value to the consumers. So let's start with the key demand drivers. Now, if, uh, as you can see my screen, we, we are talking about a bigger spectrum here. Okay, we're not just talking about diamond and jewelry on, uh, and in terms of what you're seeing on your screen right now, we're talking about what is the global luxury market like okay and uh, we see 260 billion dollars of personal luxury market which is huge you have the luxury cars hospitality wines food art furniture jets and yachts and blah 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 now the 260 billion dollars that you see here uh, in terms of the personal luxury segment also includes the diamond jewelry market in it, the jewelry market per se. And then that's the personal luxury market, which is at 31%. And year on year, there is about a 7% increase in this particular category, which is, uh, which is, which is good, which is uh, steady, and which is going to ensure that the demand for diamonds is going to continue uh, for the next few decades at least. And uh, where do you see the most dynamic growth? Uh, if you go down to the market size where Europe is at 32%, America is 31%, Japan is at 8%. Now, if you, if you will sum this up, you will see the most dynamic growth is concentrated in Asia, including Japan and China. And uh, very interestingly, the diamond jewelry consumption is correlated with the US GDP and disposable income. A very interesting fact, considering we are talking at a 1.2 trillion luxury market in totality. Now, this is, this is what, of course, don't consider this as the numbers that are coming out to you during the crisis. No, this were, of course, the numbers that were being drawn derived pre-crisis. Of course, post-crisis, a lot of things are going to change. I, uh, I, I don't deny that. But as I said, nothing is constant. It is going to change. Uh, maybe we will have uh, revenge shopping, you know, and that's what China is uh, seeing up to a certain extent today. People who have not gone out, people who haven't shopped for a while, and people uh, who have been locked down in their houses for the last two months have really started going out, hitting the malls. Uh, you can you can see queues now outside a few stores. So yes, it is going to return back to normal, but it is going to return back to normal earlier than expected, earlier than the the crisis that we faced in two thousand eight took us about a year and a half to really come back to normal. Uh, predictions are there that considering governments have uh, extended huge support uh, and i'm not just talking about the american government but governments worldwide 
very clearly understanding that it's it's the smaller companies it's the common man who needs the money most uh, versus just the financial institutions and that is where you see uh, governments announcing you know stimulus packages all over the world including us europe india and, and uh, everywhere else this is going to be a key differentiator this is going to ensure that we bounce back to normal earlier than expected and if i have to give you uh, an analysis of what some of these institutions have to think about how fast we're going to come back to normal it, it is about a quarter plus a little more than a quarter that we all should be uh, back to our day-to-day -day lives for everything but of course time is uh, going to prove that in a much better manner going to the next uh, slide folks uh, what is the strong long-term demand outlook uh, it is, of course, you know, driven by disposable income growth and the middle class expansion, which we see worldwide, not just in a particular segment, but of course, India really ranks at the top with 7% disposable income growth, which is phenomenal, and 13.7% uh, of middle class growth, uh, followed by China, which is going to have 6% of compound annual growth rate, the CAGR that we see here at um, 6%, uh, followed by US, which is at 2%, and the middle class growth at 2.4%. Now, very, very interestingly, as you can see, the Chinese middle class growth over here uh, will be at 24.6%, a uh, staggering number, very interesting number. And if you correlate this to the diamond jewelry demand growth forecast, it is at about between two and 4%, whilst India is being forecasted to grow between three and 7%. Now, uh, of course, you know, a, a lot of these numbers probably will improve from here because these are very, very conservative figures that I'm showing you uh, so that we are closer to reality. Let's see how the diamond demand and the pricing is going to be a key driver in this. Now, if you will see, there are three big mines, uh, mining companies rather around the world, uh, Alrosa, De Beers and Rio Tinto, uh, collaboratively control about 70% of the global rough diamond output. And uh, again, this is, uh, this is what is the majority of what we see around the world in terms of diamond supply. As you can see here, uh, Russia being at the top uh, for, as far as diamond reserves are concerned, 70% uh, of it comes from the big three. And going forward, uh, we really don't know if there are going to be mines which are going to come up with bigger reserves than what these mines already have, or maybe they're only going to deplete the resources. The way, the way Al Rosa uh, is in a situation today where by the end of 2020, Al Rosa has announced that it is going to shut its, uh, uh, my, my mistake, sorry. It is the Argyle mine, which is going to shut its operations by the end of 2020. And that means there'll be a depletion of rough diamonds uh, supply, uh, almost up to 14 million carats a year. This is, of course, going to cause a constrained supply outlook and uh, depletion of deposits will result in diamond production declines in the coming years. Now, this is very, very interesting. Uh, look at this figure here at 14 million Argyle Rio Tinto after which is Diavik Rio Tinto mine again. We have other mines which are currently functional uh, in, uh, in Botswana, in Canada, in Russia. But if you, if you look at this chart here, 
at in 2020 we are sitting on 144 million carats of rough diamond production by the year 2023 we'll see that deplete to 139 and going forward uh, if we have to take numbers from different mines and if we have to put that together we are seeing that this resource being a natural resource is only going to deplete and let me show you the favorable supply demand fundamentals here if you will see this chart properly you will see that the compound annual growth rate that we discussed at an average of 4% will take the demand by the year 2050 to 174 million carats. If you take a base case scenario, by the year 2023, we'll still need 150 million carats versus the supply going down to 139. So what does this say? This says that if we have to consider an average growth between one and 4% for natural diamond demand, we will not be able to cope with the demand at all in the years to come. And what is going to fill that gap? Lab grown diamonds. And why lab grown diamonds? Because lab grown diamonds are created in a laboratory condition, right? Uh, there is no control over how much one can produce. It, of course, simply depends on one's ability to produce. And uh, that is where we see that lab grown diamonds are going to play a very, very important role to not just fulfill this gap, but create its own demand. And as I mentioned, it is going to create a, a huge demand uh, when it comes to millennials who are eco-sensitive, who want to buy sustainable products, who are, who are wanting to see that value when they buy something. And this is why we have so many influences today uh, on social media like Greta Thunberg and others who are able to who are able to come up with these whole new drives around the world on eco-sensitivity, who are able to bring that message across to governments saying that why are we not doing enough to protect our environment? And, and that's the key. And that is one of the reasons you see uh, very interesting products in the market today, like the lab-created meat. Uh, I don't know if you know much about it, but uh, there is lab created meat. There are there is plant based products that are already out in the market, which fill this gap for people who are conscious about what they want to consume, um, including vegans, of course. Uh, let me throw a little more light on this matter. KFC, as we all know, you know, has already started selling lab grown meat across its uh, stores in the US. Uh, there is a company called Beyond Burger and Impossible Burger who is creating, uh, th these companies are creating uh, plant-based uh, meat mock products. So if, if you wanna buy a burger, which is entirely plant-based, it is available today. If you wanna buy a burger, which is carrying, which is having lab-grown meat, it is available today. So you see how the world is changing today and how people are adapting to this new change and how it is driving a whole new demand from a lot of different segments. But of course, millennials rank at the front as far as that is concerned. Now, there is another example that I would like to give you here is about greenhouse orchids. Now, these are orchids which are grown in a controlled environment. It's not a lab, however, it's a controlled environment. And $280 million worth of greenhouse orchids were sold last year. Now, what does this say? This says that you can, of course, uh, produce and sell 
the orchids in the in the traditional manner farming them and all that and you can also grow them under a given environment bring up the same results and the consumer is happy to buy that so guys coming coming back to the favorite demand supply fundamentals for natural diamonds when the natural diamond demand will gradually increase versus the production which is going to deplete you know day by day that gap is going to be filled by lab grown diamonds at the same time as i mentioned lab grown diamonds are also going to create their own demand uh let's look at let's look at this uh, this slide which talks about how natural diamonds as a commodity uh, are playing a very important role as well so you have diamonds which are at 63% of the commodity chart and what i mean by that is the consolidated production and the supporting supply discipline for the top 3 producers today in terms of value is 63% with very little volatility 11% volatility is market accepted in a way if you look at volatility in iron ore or in in coal for that matter it's at 36% now i know there was a huge furor with uh, rapnet reducing the diamond prices uh, in the last couple of weeks and the industry has uh, not accepted or taken that very well and people have put up post of saying they are going to remove their stocks from rapport and put it elsewhere and blah 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 and all that but it's still a commodity it is still something that is being traded across the world and we cannot just expect its price to keep going up every other month or every other year there would be fluctuations because that's how a true commodity works and at 63% of the commodity market value uh, share it is not a small category at all what we see very interestingly in this chart is usa has 53% of the diamond jewelry retail sales in the world and that's again a very big number uh, us being in uh, really becoming the epicenter for corona we we really have to wait and watch on how fast president trump gets it back i'm sure you're all uh, watching news you're all seeing uh, how us has been tackling this um cannot say much but uh, probably you know they can do more let's stick to that okay so let's talk a little more about uh, lab grown diamonds we have two different types here one is the hphd lab grown diamonds and the other is cbd diamonds a lot of you all would know a lot of you all who don't know a synthetic diamond is a man made diamond created in a scientific laboratory it has the same chemical composition and crystal structure as a natural one but the growth process is artificial of course it is being developed in a laboratory condition but to make it simple you don't have to dig a hole in the earth for lab grown diamonds and uh, uh, i i've been a, i've been inspired by a few events in the past uh, let me share a small instance with you i was at this agency ngo called pure earth uh, there in new york and uh, my fellow larry bock he took me to a meeting uh, which was a which was a general meeting pure earth was organizing that evening in new york and uh, it was uh, a great pleasure to be part of the meeting where they were planning what their new projects were and it it really you know i i was hit with reality during that meeting so thanks to larry that i saw how these ngos are working effortlessly you know trying to change the world we are living in and they go to what extent to ensure that we all get clean air clean water and a safer environment around us uh, pure earth 
during that meeting it was an internal meeting had uh, had a presentation to show how they are cleaning up the contaminated sites around the world which are related to lead poisoning and guys uh, it's a sad figure but there are about 600 plus million kids around the world who've got more than average level of lead contents in their in their blood and which is very sad and uh, thanks to agencies like pure earth and other agencies who are working relentlessly to ensure that we have a better world to live in not just for us but for everybody around us so that that really made me think that what is it that you know the world needs when it comes to a cleaner environment a better future for the generations to come and of course uh, climate change is is the need of the hour we already late i would say uh, we all need to do our own bit for this and we all need to put in the smallest possible effort to ensure that you know we can we can be proud to put our head up and say this is what i have done for a cleaner environment and a better world coming back to uh, lab ground diamonds let me show you a video uh, courtesy of limelight diamonds limelight diamonds is a, a lab grown diamond brand uh, from india and uh, a very interesting uh, aggressive team uh, i have met them a few times and i really like not just the idea of them producing diamonds in laboratory condition but also the fact that they are they are deep down you know eco conscious so if you if you happen to meet the team you'll learn how they are not just selling a lab grown diamond and talking about eco consciousness but they've taken a step further to ensure that uh, even at their uh, offices and their residences uh, they do not use plastic they uh, they do not waste uh, energy and a lot of other good things so let's have a quick look at the limelight diamond videos cbd diamonds named after its process chemical vapor deposition undergo the same process as natural diamonds it all starts with a diamond seed a thin layer is cut from the natural diamond to form the cbd diamond seed this seed is a type 2a seed the purest form of diamond 100% carbon the seed is then polished and prepared to a required thickness for it to be placed in the cbd plasma reactor Once placed in the reactor, the process begins exactly the same as found under the surface of the earth. An intense environment of the temperature and pressure is created just like that found in the earth. When the diamond is growing in a natural environment, several other impurities like nitrogen and boron enter the diamond formation along with the gases. CVD process is controlled and doesn't allow any impurities to enter the diamond. Carbon particles slowly start disintegrating and forming layers on top of the diamond seed. The result is a rough CVD diamond, the same as a natural diamond, only purer. The diamonds are then removed with precision. And the cutting process begins. And they are the same. CVD diamonds have the same physical, chemical, and optical properties as the natural diamond. 
the guarantee of quality, the beauty of nature. A diamond deserves to be perfect. All right, guys. So we are going to uh, stop this presentation and I'm going to take some questions now so that we don't get ourselves, you know, in a situation where there are so many questions and then we don't have the time. So let's see the questions here. We have Mr. Venkata Ramana asking me, will lab grown diamonds take the place of natural diamonds completely? A good question, Mr. Venkata, but uh, I'm not in a position to answer that at this uh, stage. But what I can tell you is that, of course, lab grown diamonds are gaining momentum. There are more and more people who are now learning about lab grown diamonds and who are going out and asking for it. The trend has been picking up in India, but if you will look at markets like US, Europe, uh, there's of course a huge demand for it. So I, I, I think it will always coexist. Nobody's going to take over the other category as such because lab grown is going to create its own space and own niche. Lab grown diamonds, of course, uh, can be produced in a much bigger manner uh, compared to you know, the production that we are seeing in the mines today. So, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. So I, I personally don't think that it, any category will take over the other category, but they'll all coexist. We have, uh, we have Nishant Dolakya who's asking, don't we need to focus on making customers aware? What's the difference between natural and synthetic? I agree, Nishant. Uh, there is a real need for consumers to now know that what is the difference between a lab grown and a natural diamond. However, I will caution the use of the word synthetic here, Nishant, because the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission in the US, has very clearly mentioned to not use the word synthetic uh, because of the fact that lab grooms have the same physical and chemical properties as of a natural diamond and hence it cannot be termed synthetic. But yes, I'm sure there are brands out there, including brands like Limelight Diamonds that are spreading the message, creating the awareness and more and more people are now learning about them. Uh, let me go through a few more questions. Hardik Shah is asking, what will be the future of diamond jewelry industry after lockdown? Hardik, I would have loved to answer this question, but we are not here to discuss the future of the diamond jewelry industry. We are here to say, what can be the opportunity in the coming future? Of course, now that you asked that question, and if I have to really, really briefly tell you what the situation can be or is anticipated to be, is that a lot of institutions have predicted that there is going to be a slowdown. We cannot run away from that fact, of course. But at the same time, we're going to see a much faster recovery. And this is crucial. You see, like 2019, there have always been years where there are ups and downs in terms of the diamond jewelry demand. Uh, two months probably are not the same. You know, If Jan is a good month, Feb is a probably a very good month or an okay month. If Feb is good, March is maybe very good. The same way, you cannot, you cannot say that, yeah, from post lockdown, everything will start booming in terms of the luxury segment or the consumer goods or anything for that matter. But what we really, really see and what we understand, given the interference of the governments today at a very micro level, we definitely see that there'll be a lot uh, faster recovery, you know, compared to the 2008 crash. Uh, let's take another question from <clears throat> Mr. Shankar Ramanathan. He's saying after all lab grown diamond 
After all, lab-grown diamond is a technology-driven product, and the cost of setting up a CBD unit has fallen down to 10% from where it started. What future would it hold is what Shankar Ramanathan is asking us. Uh, Shankar, it's a very interesting question. I really have no answer to the statistics on what you mentioned here that the production cost has gone down to 10%. But it's a very good question and I would like to really make the audience aware over here of the fact that within lab grown, there are two different technologies. One is the CVD, that's the chemical vapor deposition technology, the CVD technology, and the other is the HPHD. Now, China has been a major producer of HPHD lab grown diamonds. And that's where you see all these smaller size stones coming from China. Uh, which are grown from a single crystal. And of course, that technology cost has drastically gone down. But if I have to comment on the technology used for growing CVD diamonds, uh, I can definitely tell you that there is not such a drastic reduction in terms of the cost of growing CVDs. And maybe that's where probably in the, in the, in the, near or distant future, you will see a huge price gap between CVDs and HPHDs. And guys, let me tell you this. This is, uh, in fact, a, a very interesting fact that we all should be aware of. Is within the lab-grown segment, if we talk about CVD and HPHD, both these technologies are way different you know, from the other. Both these technologies carry a whole different production cost. Up to a certain extent, even the products differ at the scientific level. So yes, there can be a scenario where the HPHD lab grown diamonds will see a drastic fall in the price uh, because of the fall in the cost of production. Whereas the CVD will still hang in there. Again, uh, only time will tell the story, but from what market research SGL has done in the past few months and understood the CVD technology in a much in-depth level and a better manner. We definitely see that CVD will be always the premium lab-grown diamond product. And uh, <clears throat> let's take another question here uh, from Kaustub Shah. Kaustub Shah says, as you mentioned that US has 28% share of lab grown diamonds, what consumers have to say about it and what kind of consumers would be interested in buying lab grown in India? Very good question, Kostuk. So uh, US has been an early adapter of uh, lab grown diamonds. And if you will, and if you are part of the industry and if you notice the trend on how lab grown diamonds has actually picked up in terms of demand, it is always perceived that the bigger chains will launch a product and the independence will follow. But if you take the case of a country like US, the trend was started by the independents, that is the smaller retailers. They are the ones who started telling the customers the difference between the price difference primarily between a lab grown and a natural and how, how it is an eco-friendly product, how it does not harm the environment, how it is something a millennial should buy, and how they're going to get more value for their money because of the fact that lab-grown diamonds, CVD diamonds specifically, are about 30% cheaper compared to the natural counterpart. So if I'm a consumer and if I want to buy a 75-point stone, and if my budget is X, Y, Z, when my retailer tells me that, listen, you got a similar product, you got something that looks exactly the same, that has the same strength, physically, chemically is exactly the same. And if I get to buy a one carat diamond, just an example, versus a 75 pointer, why will I not do that? And that is what has really picked up the entire trend in the US market. Going forward, I think, the Indian consumer will embrace this well. It is a matter of time. India is a, a land of gold. 
uh, Indians love gold, as we historically uh, know, and, and it's it's even today the largest consumer for gold in the world. So we cannot deny the fact that India will still continue its trend of buying gold, but uh, probably times like this uh, change people's psyche and mentality. I'll, I'll give you my, my personal example here. I was talking to somebody the other day who works in a jewelry company and she's a buyer. You know, she purchases goods on behalf of the company. And we happened to talk about lab grown diamonds. And she said, Chirag, you know, you're right. Because I was telling my mom today that look how life is unpredictable. And why should I keep hoarding gold jewelry or diamond jewelry all the time? What if, you know, an unfortunate thing even happens in my life? I would have never enjoyed what I want to enjoy. And if you will, if you will study the millennial mentality, you will understand that they don't believe in savings the way the other generations have believed. They believe to enjoy the moment then and there. They believe to enjoy the near future and not the distant future always. And this is going to bring in a big change. About six, seven years ago, there were a few websites that started selling diamond jewelry in India in a big way. And I remember talking to the trade and critics always told me that there is no, there is no way that a consumer in India will be happy to buy diamond jewelry online. And, and a lot of them vouched, you know, they said, no, no, for sure, you know, there'll be no, there'll be no consumer online as such who will buy, you know, diamond jewelry or, or at least expensive diamond jewelry. And we are seeing the trend changing so fast. Uh, there is carrotlane.com, there is bluestone.com, there is candia.com. All these companies are selling online to consumers all over the country. So if a consumer in India is buying diamond jewelry online, why will they not buy lab grown diamond jewelry online if the right message is being delivered and if they are made aware of the choices they have in front of them? All right, so let's go to the next one. Uh, Viral Mehta is asking that some jewelers selling mozanite, CVD and real in same jewelry don't you think it's completely unethical where customer will be confused and lose complete faith? I agree, Viral, and as a lab, I have no second thoughts to that. <clears throat> that people who are unethical, people who are not disclosing what they're selling are very, very detrimental for the entire industry. Uh, Unfortunately, we don't have policies in place that can really, really help, you know, uh, consumers and filter these kind of jewelers who uh, are, are creating a bad reputation for our industry. But I'm sure in the times to come, associations and governments will take action. The same way we are seeing that the Indian government is going to make hallmarking mandatory in the times to come. There will be a time, there will be a day, but we don't know when. Let's take the last question now before we get back to our presentation. Uh, I have a lot of them in front of me, so unfortunately I can, can't answer all of them. Uh, we have Maha Al Sibai from Dubai. Uh, asking me that the price for lab grown diamond is around 45% less than natural. And don't I think it will be much cheaper <clears throat> than, and then disappear like how Mozanite was 10 years back. Ma, uh, as I mentioned, there are different technologies to produce different types of lab grown diamonds. Mozanite does not fall under the lab grown category. Mozanite falls under a simulant category. It has a whole different technology to produce uh, mozanites. And of course, there is a whole different technology to produce CVD diamonds. Now, if we have to compare the two different technologies, 
there is a vast vast difference and it's very important to understand that mozanite can be visually segregated whereas cbd cannot be visually segregated which means that if you if you look at a natural diamond and a cbd diamond holding both of them in your hands or even using a loop or a microscope you will not be able to differentiate one to the other the differentiation is only at the atomic scientific level that is one of the reasons that probably lab grown diamonds will hold the fort much stronger than mozanite <laughs> okay guys so i'm going to continue now with the presentation uh, round 2 will have another question and answer session so hang on there i'll be able to take much more questions once we finish this all right so so coming back to uh, the presentation we have uh, demystifying lab grown diamonds so what is one of the common myths that we have is the ftc the federal trade commission ruling that states that diamonds and lab grown diamonds are the same now the truth is that ftc guidelines in no ways mention that they are both the same the only thing ftc clearly specifies is the fact that physically and chemically they are exactly like natural diamonds however any reseller producer uh, trader who deals or even retailer for that matter deals in lab grown diamonds in the united states has to use the word lab grown before or after so going to the next myth is the launch of lab grown diamond brand by a major natural producer endorses lab grown diamond as a valid substitute to natural diamonds now what is the truth here is that differentiated market positioning clearly illustrates the differences between diamonds and lab grown diamonds and will serve as a baseline for lgd perception by consumers and industry what what are we trying to tell you here is that <clears throat> the positioning for each category is different over here lab grown diamond is not trying to take the natural diamond consumer and natural diamond consumer you know category shouldn't take the lab grown diamond consumer these are two different things exactly the same way i meant mention about lab grown meat or 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 for example the greenhouse orchids if i am a informed consumer and if i have to go out and if i have to buy a lab grown meat burger i exactly know what i'm looking for so if there is enough awareness for this product and if there is enough clarity in the minds of the consumers there will be no there will be no gray area as such and that will automatically make this entire gray area clear for consumers and it is happening as we speak uh, thanks to the internet that more and more people can go online for anything and everything and can uh, clear their doubts on what they are looking for and i think the new age consumer is a well informed consumers versus the consumer in the past and that is where we'll see the demand coming from the consumer itself and that is what has happened in the market like us when when people started selling lab grown consumers started going online and understanding what's the difference between a lab grown and a natural this created a whole new drive where consumers went to the retailer and said i want a lab grown diamond and that's how more and more retailers started stocking lab grown diamonds and then you see one of the biggest us retailer put up lab grown diamonds across their stores and this is in 2019 and i think majority of the chains 
majority of the chains have lab-grown diamonds in some or the other form now in the US. Now, what are we what are we looking at in terms of the forecasted future in terms of value? We are looking at 16.5 billion US dollars by the year 2026 uh, in terms of market revenue attributable to lab to diamonds, which is a very interesting big figure. And let me tell you that in the last year itself, uh, in the last quarter, I would say, let me be very specific. In the last quarter, India has seen lab grown diamonds, <clears throat> sorry, India has seen lab grown diamond exports jump by nearly 62%. And this is a huge jump. $36 million worth of lab grown diamonds were exported in February 2020 alone. If you will see the figures from April until Feb, so April 2019 until Feb 20, $388 million worth of lab grown diamonds have been exported from India. If I have to compare this to the previous year, it was at $326 million in the entire year. That is from April until March, from 2018 April until March 2019, India exported $300. $26 million worth of lab grown diamonds. It has already achieved $388 million worth of exports in from April 2019 until February 2020. 62% growth year on year. This is, this is a, a figure um, that has really shocked uh, a lot of people to see how fast the category is growing. Some people have raised their hands, but guys, uh, give me just some more time before I come back to you with the Q&A session. Once again, I, I promise I will. Uh, it's just that I don't want to take too many breaks between a presentation. Let's uh, see this another video that we have in front of us again. Uh, could see off uh, line, but let me let me get to get to this before we get to the video. We are talking about HPHT and we're talking about CBD. Now to give you a quick, quick intro, HPHT diamonds are high pressure, high temperature created diamonds uh, produced from graphite at temperatures of about 1400 degrees Celsius and a pressure of about 55,000 atmospheres. A very, very common technology used in China, uh, large scale production, smaller sizes, much cheaper compared to the natural counterpart and even cheaper than CVD for that matter. This would, this is your typical natural diamond crystal shape where the natural diamonds come in the octahedron shape, whereas the, the lab room diamonds are more like sugar cubes. CVD is chemical vapor deposition, as I mentioned before typically occurs under low pressure, one atmospheric pressure and involves feeding varying amounts of gases, including methane and hydrocarbon gas into a chamber and energizing them and providing conditions for a diamond growth on the substrate. <clears throat> so what they effectively do is there is a very thin wafer of a natural diamond and then you have the carbon vapor deposition happening layer by layer, you know, one after the other. And between one and four weeks, you will see that wafer becoming into a thick sugar cube. And that's the rough CVD diamond. We saw in our, in our video before this, and it's a far superior technology uh, compared to growing uh, mozanites or cubic zirconia or anything around us. And that is the reason it is able to achieve the same physical and chemical properties as of a natural diamond. Let's see this video again, courtesy of Limelight Diamonds.
Right, guys, let's continue with the next slide. Thank you to Limelight Diamonds once again for sharing this video. Going back to the early conversation on screening, STL has its own proprietary technology called the Dia Screen Excel and the X, which can easily help you screen lab grown diamonds as well as natural diamonds in loose as well as set condition. It's a very simple, effective, consistent technology and uh, uh, very handy. It's portable. You can carry it wherever you want. Very, very accurate as well at the same time. And we've done a lot of tests in-house before we even launch this. So uh, we are there to back it up. We are there when it comes to servicing these products, the warranties and everything. Feel free to connect with us later on if you would like to know more about this. Going to our next uh, topic, which is related to the marketing messages that lab grown diamonds are giving out or probably can do a better job from one of the questions that were asked in the q a section before what is it that is that is being given out as a message what is it that the lab grown diamond industry is talking to the consumers and that is that it's affordable number one because of the price difference consumer always has a, a, an option to buy a bigger diamond for the same value as a natural diamond. It is identical as we discussed that including FTC uh, guidelines, which clearly state that the physical and the chemical properties are the same. It is an innovative product, of course, because the world has not seen a lab grown diamond before. It is uh, easily available today and probably even tomorrow, considering the fact that we don't have to have a mind for this and it, it can be created in a controlled environment. A lot of them also exist in America, it, these kind of laboratories who produce CBDs and they market it as made in America, created in America. It is unique, it is, it is a value proposition and uh, a lot of things around it. But yes, it is something that, uh, that is a value for money proposition for a lot of new age consumers. So as Maha al Sibai had mentioned in the earlier question that how are these compared or how is the CBD price compared to a mozanite and what will happen to it in the future? Now, if you see the synthetic substitutes for diamonds always have had a different price driver and value to customers as well. Now, take the example of natural diamonds. You have the product of nature. Of course, it is a natural diamond. <clears throat> it is rare. It is unique. It is inherently valuable. It is consolidated, you know, in terms of supply. And of course it has its entry barriers versus lab grown diamond is a industrial product up to a certain extent can be produced in volume uh, depending on and who the producer is and how much they want to produce and how much they can produce. You also have the fact that it is highly fragmented and has low entry barriers. At the same time, CVDs are driven in terms of price because of the technology and the cost versus natural diamond where the price drivers are not just the technology and the cost or the rarity of the stone but of course the symbolism and the supply discipline when we talk about the supply discipline if you if you would have noticed earlier we spoke about how the big three mines in the world are supplying 70 percent of the rough diamonds that are available in the market today and even though natural diamond exists with lab grown diamond and they all coexist with this cubic zirconia and, and stuff like that, everyone has their own space and niche and price driver. Look at this slide and you will, you will see how mozanites are, are at $400 a carat. This is just an example. So please don't, uh, you know, come back to me saying, oh, which mozanite is $400 versus 
which lab room name is $800. It's an example on the overall price differentiation with the same parameters. Cubic zirconia is at $20 or $40. Now, when you have a cubic zirconia, which is at $20 or $40, which can be visually identified, which does not have the same physical and chemical properties as of a natural diamond, of course, it is going to be positioned differently in, in the mind of the trader and the consumer. And that is where CVDs have a huge edge uh, because of their physical chemical properties being the same, visually they being the same, the price difference being about 30-35%. So, so guys, this is, this is what I had to share with you in terms of the knowledge on uh, the price drivers, on the positioning, on the different types of growing technology, on how the world is perceiving lab-grown diamonds, including the consumer in US. Let us now go to the next slide, which I have already spoken to you about, and that is about the exports from India for lab-grown, so I won't stick to this. So thank you so much, but hang on there. I'm gonna go back and now start answering the other questions. I see a lot of them have popped up over here. Uh, let's see. So we have a question from Mr. D. Morley, and he's asking <clears throat> about the fact that lab grown diamonds can change color or not. Now, Mr. Morley, it's a good question. It's a very relevant question. Let me tell you that not all lab grown diamonds change colors. It has been noted by a few laboratories that instances like this do occur in very, very rare situations. Uh, if you take an example of GIA or, or other labs, including SGL, who are certifying lab-grown diamonds, we haven't come across more than one such case in the last two years. <laughs> including our laboratories in New York, in London, in Dubai, in Mumbai, where we certify natural as well as lab grown diamonds. So yes, there has been a recorded case, but it is extremely rare in nature. And because we test laboratory grown diamonds on almost daily basis, we, we really don't see it to be a major concern. Let's go to the Next question now that we have. The same, I think Hardik Shah has the same question pretty much, which says, what is the durability of LGD? Durability of LGD is exactly as good as the durability of a natural diamond for that matter. And I can tell you it will be there until at least me and you are there, Hardik. Uh, it is CVD ranks at 10 on more scale and it is one of the toughest materials. And hence, the FTC of US has come up uh, with the conclusion not to term them as synthetic. What, so we have Roxanne asking us, what's your take on malicite diamond? What impacts positive or negative that industry foresee on this segment of the diamonds? That's a very, very good question, Roxanne. The, the malicite diamonds, especially the lab-grown melisized diamonds are mostly HPHT. As I mentioned earlier that China is a major producer of HPHT lab-grown diamonds and they primarily produce the melisizes. So if you, if you are coming across a melisized lab-grown diamond, 95% of the uh, cases would be that it will be from China. India, there are producers in Surat and some of the big producers are there in Surat for CBD diamonds and they primarily produce the bigger sizes. There is Ronnie who is asking us that shouldn't we call them factory grown diamonds, not lab grown diamonds. Uh, laboratory gives a false impression and look at the size of these facilities. Uh, Ronnie, let me answer you that uh, with a lot of information that we've gathered in the past, as I mentioned. Uh, laboratory grown diamonds are 
grown in a proper laboratory condition. It's not a manufacturing unit. It's not how we see a car producing unit where there are robots at work and all they do is start fixing the tires and the, and the engine and stuff like that. This is a proper lab condition. And hence, once again, I repeat this, and hence the FTC in US has clearly stated that it is not a synthetic product and it is to be termed as lab grown. Uh, we have a question from somebody. Uh, let me give you the name. Ah, it's an anonymous uh, attendee who is saying, which major US chain is talking lab grown diamond? A uh, lot of them, in fact, do that. In fact, Signet, the, the, the company, the organization, which is one of the biggest retailer for jewelry in the world, has launched lab grown diamonds across its its stores in the middle of 2019 including including Jared the jeweler including a lot of other sub brands that they have if you will go to signet's website you will have a much detailed information available over there okay so let's take the next question Oh, there are a lot of them and uh, again as i mentioned earlier i will stick to the most relevant ones over here okay there is prasad vernikar who is asking if the demand for lab grown diamond jewelry increases in india and people will buy them will international labs certify those jewelry prasad sgl is an international lab and it is already certifying laboratory grown diamonds. So if you are going to buy one, please ask for an SGL certificate. Let me take another question here. There is a question from, uh, again, I don't see the name here, but it's the, the person is asking if CBD diamonds, once they occupy the present market for natural diamond, will it drop the prices for natural? It's a very, very interesting question. Uh, but again, as we discussed during this presentation, you're, we are not anticipating that one category will take away the share from the other. We are very clearly saying that each category is going to create its own niche. Each category is going to create its own consumer demand. And natural diamonds, as you saw in this presentation, even if we take a conservative growth of 4% year on year in the natural diamond category, we are still looking at a very strong, robust demand coming from the consumers in the years to come. There is, uh, we have a question from Tanya and Tanya is asking me if jewelry designers in the Middle East are using lab grown diamonds. Tanya, not that I have come across any major, you know, uh, chain or a retail independent retailer or even a designer who currently sells lab grown diamonds in the Middle East in a big way. Maybe you can probably ask your designer or just ask one of the brands that exist there and if, see if they can supply you one. But not that it exists in my knowledge because right now I'm giving you this webinar from Dubai. I'm stationed over here. We have our lab here and we work with the trade very, very closely and we don't see any such independent designer or a retail chain store that sells a lab room diamonds here. But for sure in the times to come. Okay, we have 
uh, Puneet asking a very relevant question, and that is if the price list for lab grown diamonds is fixed as per carat size. And he says that he guesses Rappaport has still not fixed the price for lab grown diamonds. You are right, Puneet. Rappaport does not uh, publish any prices for lab grown diamonds. At the same time, there is no price list that is available for lab grown diamonds per se, as of today. The, the price driver for lab grown diamonds is the demand supply variables. And that is where you see that there are times where the lab grown diamonds prices have gone up and there are times where the lab grown diamond prices have gone down. However, we don't see huge volatility in the pricing. Hardik Shah has one more question and uh, that is if Indian chain stores will adapt lab grown diamonds. Hardik, only time will tell the story, but as a lab that certifies natural diamond as well as lab grown diamonds, and we already work with some of these brands that sell lab grown diamonds, we definitely see that there is an increased demand in the last two quarters, pre-corona I'm talking about specifically, there has been an increased demand in lab grown diamonds and I hope and I think that the trend will continue. Okay, so let's see who else. Okay, we have Sai Shrikant who is asking if a retailer maintains CBD and natural diamonds in the store, how would they justify the perception of the Indian consumer? Uh, very good question, Mr. Shrikant. And it's a very relevant question as well, I must say. The Indian consumer being a conservative consumer so far uh, is always going to be facing this situation when they come across lab grown diamonds. But as I earlier said that nobody expected the Indian consumer to go and buy diamond jewelry on a website. At least, at least seven years back, people were very, very uh, pessimistic about it and uh, nobody was sure if this will take up. And today we are seeing a whole different consumer that is, that is there and that is buying diamond jewelry online. If we have to say that, yes, there is this consumer group that exists and, and that is, there are those people who believe in buying online versus going out and shopping, then it's the same, same mentality that you have to deal with when it comes to creating that clear classification and distinguishing between a lab grown and a natural. If, if you are a retailer, and if you are going to be transparent enough to your consumer and you're going to represent the two different categories in, in, in their own individual ways and represent in their own individual strengths, I think the consumer will be the final judge here in taking that informed decision. So given the right platform, given the right information, given the right kind of marketing, I, I very strongly believe that the India market will open up to lab grown diamonds in the near future. All right, guys, we, we do have a few more questions, but I guess we've, uh, we've already crossed the almost one and a half uh, hour barrier here. I'm going to just take a last couple of questions before we sign off. We have Mr. Brahmaji, who is asking if the density uh, of the diamonds of lab grown and original is this different. Uh, Mr. Brahmaji, it is not. As I mentioned earlier, it is exactly the same as natural diamonds, physically and chemically. Let me dig into a couple of more questions that are there in front of me. 
guys be patient uh, i will not take long but it's just that i'm really bombarded with a lot of them right now some uh, tania again has a question which says how big a cvd diamond can be produced today tania we have come across cvd diamonds on regular basis up to 2 carats there are few diamonds that we have certified which go up to 4 4 and a half carats as well the bigger the size the lesser the probability that you will see them in the market easily available so to answer your question between 50 points and 2 carats of cvd diamonds are very very easily available if you have to go in a size smaller than 50 30 or even 10 pointers you will come across a lot of hpst especially with the star melee nothing beyond 5 carat is what is very commercially available we have uh, atul jain asking us while we are looking at a market marked shift in client spending from higher value to lower value products and also the phenomenal growth in online model of jewelry selling do you think it is a ideal atmosphere for the consumer shift towards lab growth atul you have used the word synthetic diamond jewelry but i am i am not using that because i have mentioned before that uh, i would not like to use the word synthetic because it is a wrong presentation of that category however answering your question uh you are you are right when it comes to the analysis that this client the consumer spends are drifting downwards and and that is where in fact we see the opportunity for lab growth once again uh, let us have a a clear understanding we are a lab sgl is a lab that certifies both natural diamonds and lab growth for us there is no bias towards any category what i am talking about is only the fact that what we see in terms of the upcoming trends so so friends please don't uh, misperceive or misconstrue that i am only you know brand ambassador in lab grown diamonds that is not the case it's just that this session is dedicated to lab grown diamonds and dedicated to difference between natural and lab grown hence we are talking a lot more about that anyway this will be uh, this will be the almost the last question that i'll answer now and that is how this trend will continue going forward at you are right that the consumer spend on diamond jewelry is going down each year overall but that does not mean that people will start selling very inferior quality that is the i2s or the i3s but once again it it always it's the demand supply variables that retailers will have to adapt to so if you are a retailer and if you are not selling a lower quality diamond maybe tomorrow you will start selling them depending on your consumer's need a retailer is there to to service the consumer a retailer is there to give the consumer what they want so if you are a retailer and you understand what your consumer is asking i'm sure at some point you will either have a lower color a lower clarity diamond in your store or probably you will even start stocking laboratory gold diamonds so guys thank you so much for for being there and i am sure you learned uh, a lot of things in today's session you understood a few things uh, you you clearly see where the world is heading when it comes to lab gold diamonds with the information i shared with you i hope this will be useful in the times to come for all of you all thank you so much once again thank you jewelry outlook have a good evening good afternoon everyone bye bye